I'm back at square one, right? I lost what 70 pounds throughout that first journey. What I didn't tell you is I had, it ended up gaining about 50 pounds of it back over the next like three years. It's so crazy how sometimes people lose weight, but they do the yo-yo effect. And yeah. They get bigger than where they were before. Yeah. Yeah. Cause your, your body remembers, right? It's very adaptive, you know? So like whenever you induce like the stimulus or the stress on it, which dieting, it is a stress, right? Mm -hmm. When you're eating less food than your body needs to survive, that is a huge stress on the body. It goes into like, survival mode, you heard, right? You mold everything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. We are so excited in another episode once again. Thank you so much. But we have a special, special guest. So first of all, before we start, let me introduce myself once again. My name is Danielle Bilumbu Leach. Yes, I add the Leach because I started using my husband's last name. <laughs> He'll be very happy. So I'm Danielle Bilumbu Leach, real estate uh, broker here in Houston area. And here's my bestie, which yeah, is... Yeah, Boo Jabby with AMP London. How y'all doing today? Great. So we have something very special. This is for everybody out there. They are health junkie. They want to take care of themselves. They want to be better. I know it's the middle of the year, mm. but it's never too late to start. We, let's start now, now. Uh, August and say that August is your new January. And we have a special guest over here, Mr. Nick. He does have an amazing company uh, where it helps people put the duck in a row, make sure they know what they're doing with their health. Hey, Nick. How are uh, you? Good. I appreciate y'all having me out here today. Like, I'm going to do my very best to make sure that I deliver as much value as I can to your audience. So, Thank you. hopefully, mm -hmm. I can live up to that. <laughs> and his company name is The Transformation Project. So, Nick, first of all, before we start talking about the details about The Transformation yeah. Project, tell us about you. Where you come from, where the idea come. Mm, yeah. Tell us. So, I'm going I'm to go ahead and take y'all back a little while, a little ways back, right? Um, right now, so I do own a nutrition coaching company called The Transformation Project and then a software company that helps nutrition coaches build coaching businesses. But before all that, I was a Marine Scout sniper. So that's what I did for my career. Um, straight out of high school, I joined the Marine Corps like some do, right? Just straight out of high school, went straight to the Marine Corps. I soon found myself in uh, sunny California in San Diego going through boot camp. Um, eventually, I found my way in Iraq. I did my first deployment as an infantryman. Um, came back from Iraq, and I was like, okay, what's next? I need more, right? I want to level up my skills, my assets to what I'm doing. And I tried out for a scout sniper team. I eventually became a scout sniper and I found myself on my next deployment in Afghanistan. Um, so was it February, 2011, I was on a deployment in Afghanistan and I was assigned a mission one day. It was just a normal routine mission for us, right? Just going out there, eliminating people that probably shouldn't be be there. And what happened was we were on a mission to take out a guy that was putting bombs in a road mm -hmm. and they were targeting coalition forces and just our troops, right? So they're putting IEDs inside this road that they were frequently traveling. So they sent out my sniper team to go locate and eliminate this threat. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was about 10 o'clock that night. We stepped out on another routine mission. We were going to go set in. We we're going to watch this road for the next few days and see if we could find somebody, right? And take them out, hopefully. Well, what ended up happening was we were setting up our, our, our hide site, is what we call it. So this is where we kind of like we bunker in, hide ourselves so we can kind of conceal ourselves from the enemy so no one can see us. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot of work, right? So we have to like cover ourselves with a bunch of like vegetation or a ghillie suit. And basically we would go back and forth and we were crossing over this road. Eventually it was probably like four o'clock in the morning and I looked over to my teammate who was with me and I said, all right, Bibs, we're done. Let's go lay down and let's just, let's watch. Let's see what happens. And as soon as I said that, I turned around and I took a single step. And the next thing I knew, I was being thrown through the air oh, wow. and then into the ground hard. Like the, the dark night was instantly filled with a bright flash of a bomb going off underneath me. Mm -hmm. I instantly realized I just stepped on a bomb. A bomb. Yeah. And so now it was pitch black at night. It started to rain. I was laying there. I was bleeding out. I was in a bunch of pain. And at that point, I didn't know what was going to happen. And all I remember is I was calling out to Blake or Bibbs. I was like, Bibbs, where are you? Blake, come help me. Because he got hit too, right? He okay. took the back blast. I stepped on it and he took the repercussion of it going yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And so it threw him down too. And so it became this game of Marco Polo. I'm like, Blake, I'm over here. He's like, where are you at, Nick? Blake, I'm over here. And so he's crawling, trying to find me. It's pitch black at night. We can't see anything. We're in like some weird terrain. It was just the two of you? Well, there was three of us total, okay. right? Um, but the other guy was too far away at the time. But eventually he got to me, took off his belt, started putting tourniquets on my leg, took off my belt, put a tourniquet on my leg. I looked down, my right leg 
blown off, right? Everything from the knee down was just gone. My left leg, the bottom of my boot was pointed up towards my face, and then, like, my tib and my fib was pointing out the left side, right? So there's just bones just all going out the left. My hips, open pelvic fracture. It's funny because I say, like, a lot of, like, these crazy, like, big injuries, right? The thing that hurt me the most was a little fracture to my finger, <laughs> right? <laughs> to my pinky finger. It had an open fracture. It was the hand that I was holding my gun with, and I couldn't get it to open, right? I remember this just hurting so bad at first, initially. But eventually, he put tourniquets on. I remember just laying there, and it felt like my legs were just, like, in a fire, right? Just burning. And then it felt like my upper body was, like, in the Arctic Ocean. Like, it was just freezing cold, mm -hmm. right? And as we were laying there, I remember just kind of like, man... What's going on? What's going to happen? So they called in a medevac to come pick me up, a helicopter. And the last thing you ever want to hear when you're in a life or death situation is help can't get to you. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we heard over the radio. Sorry, the air is red. We cannot send a helicopter to come get you right now. You are have to hold on. All right. And so it became a, a very long game at that point. It's um, a mental game at that point. So yeah. mentally, you're talking to yourself and say, you're going to make exactly. it. Exactly. And that, and that's the battle I began to fight, right? The seconds felt like minutes, the minutes felt like hours. And eventually the hour started feeling like days, right? And probably like 30 or 40 minutes gone by. And it was at the point where I'm like, man, I don't know if I could fight any longer. I was getting tired. I was trying to keep my eyes open. I, it's like, I couldn't, right? And I would close my eyes and eventually I would just get slapped in the face by one of my teammates. He'd be like, Nick, wake up. You're still in the fight. Right. And that must have happened like six times going back and forth. I'm like, dude, I'm good with this. Like, I accept what happened. I accept where I'm at. Just tell my family I loved them. Right. Let me go. And I would close my eyes, attempting to go to sleep. Bam. Catch another slap across <laughs> the face. Very thankful for that at the time. You know yeah. what I mean? But he kept waking me up. He kept reminding me, hey, no, you're still in the fight. Right. One more step. Keep pushing forward. This is what you're here for. You know, and eventually we did get word over the radio that help was on the way about an hour later. You know, so at that point, I was pretty much in shock to like the very 10th degree, you know, eventually I found myself on the helicopter. I don't remember anything after that. It was nights out and I woke up in Germany probably about like seven, eight days later at that point. Right. But thinking back to my, that point in my life, right. That one step, that single, it took a single step, like a single step changed the trajectory of my life. Mm -hmm. And there's something that I always write on the end of my emails. And anytime I write a post on social media is that you're only ever one decision away from changing your life forever. Exactly. Right. For the better, or for the worse. Mm -hmm. It's your, your side, it's your choice to decide. Right. And so like that became a very monumental point in my life and it changed the course of my trajectory. Right. So now I go from being a Marine, not just a Marine but a hard charging scout sniper in the Marine Corps, someone that people look up to, yeah. right? People that someone that's there to really bring the fight to the enemy and make sure that our brothers and sisters are taken care of. And we, I walked around with a lot of pride wearing that title. And now I go to being a guy in a hospital bed, right? Going through all these surgeries and I find my way back in a, the San Antonio, the military medical center eventually about 20 days later. And I remember being in this hospital bed and like, I felt so helpless, right? And I don't really talk about this so much, but I took a blanket that was on the bed. I wrapped it around my neck, and I tied it up to the bar, and I rolled off the bed in hopes that I would end the suffering or end the pain I was in, you know? Thankfully, a nurse caught that, and she cut the blanket. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like, that was, like, just a very dark place for me in my life. I lost sight of who I was as a man, as a Marine. I felt helpless. I felt hopeless. I felt broken. And... I just let myself go, mm -hmm. right? I had no more purpose. I didn't know what my identity was, and I started to gain a bunch of weight, right? I was eating unhealthy. I wasn't paying attention to how I was feeling my body. I was very dependent on narcotics, all the medicines that they were giving me, right? The Oxycontin, the Percocet, the lot, like all of it. Is that making you a, a yeah. to it? I, there's so much brain fog. I couldn't mm -hmm. see through it. Like there was no clear vision of what my life was. I started drinking myself to sleep because I couldn't get to sleep. Or when I did get to sleep, the only thing that I would remember is stepping on a bomb, right? I would be woken up by an IED every single night. Mm -hmm. And I stopped wanting to go to sleep because of that one thing. And at that point, like, it was just, it was a very dark place to be in, you know? I secluded myself from the world, from people. I didn't go to my physical therapy appointments, my occupational or occupational therapy appointments. I just stopped caring, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like... I felt bad for my family now looking back on it, watching me go through that and knowing there was nothing they could do. I, I remember them trying, 
but there's nothing that they can do, right? I'm a stubborn dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a hard charging A type personality. And eventually I did get like this aha moment, this, this wake up call. Right. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was sick and tired of feeling helpless and hopeless. I knew there's more in me and I need to do something about it. And so I was like, okay, I need to like start identifying as a Marine again. I need to start being the person I knew I'm meant to be. Like I joined the Marine Corps for a reason to serve, right. To be this role model, to be this person that takes care of everyone else, right. To be very selfless, right. To be very serving. And so I remember it was time for the Marine Corps birthday about a year later. And I was like, okay, this is my moment. I'm going to put the uniform back on, right? The dress blues, like the one with all the shiny metals, the sexy one. That everyone's yeah. like, oh yeah, like that dude looks good. <laughs> all the girls right? like. Yeah. I was like, I was like I'm going to put that uniform back on. I'm going to go to the ball, right? <laughs> I'm going to go to the Marine Corps ball. I'm going to go have fun. I'm going to go hang out with other Marines. Yeah. And I got up to about 250 pounds in that year of my life where I just kind of let myself go. And you can only imagine, right? 180 pound Nick right? 250 pound Nick. Well, one of them is not going to fit in the uniform and it's not the 180 pound Nick. It was a 250 pound Nick. Mm -hmm. So I was in this bathroom trying to put this coat on and I couldn't get the color of the clothes. And like this very moment I was instantly drowned in like a sense of sorrow, a sense of disappointment. Like I felt like I just let everyone go. Like it wasn't the fact that I was overweight and out of shape. I didn't care about that. It's because I felt like I let everyone down, right? My teammates that risked their lives to save minds on multiple occasions, mm -hmm. right? The doctors, the surgeons, the PTs, the OTs, the Marines, my family, my case, like the list goes on. Like everyone was doing everything in their power to give me a second chance at life. And I was just being ungrateful and messing it up by the lack of actions I was taking with my life. I wasn't doing anything with it. I was just sitting there letting it rot, you know? And like, that was the moment for me where like I took every pill I had, I threw it in the trash. Like I went to my kitchen, everything in it, the fridge, the freezer, the pantries, the cabinets, it all went away, right? I just overhauled my environment. I cleaned it up, right? One of the best ways, the easiest ways that you can change your circumstances by changing your immediate environment, yeah, right? Removing those things. And that's what I did. I just clean it up, right? And then that very next morning, as soon as the gym opened at five o'clock in the morning, I was the first guy in the gym, right? And that same night, I was the last guy to leave the gym. I went back to doing what I knew how to do best. And that was to fight, right? To fight with a purpose, right? To live with a passion and a drive to become better, to take care of everyone to my left and to my right. So pretty much this is what you need in yeah. life in general, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And like, so I went all in on doing what I knew how to do best. Like that was the only thing that I knew how to do at that point in my life. Like that was the only skill set that I have. So I'm like, okay, let's just do that. Cause it obviously worked at one point. Right. And so I started doing that and I started building momentum, right? Like five pounds came off, right? 10 pounds came off. And as I gained momentum, I gained evidence. And as I got evidence, I got more confident that I could be that person again. Right. And so now I started realizing, man, there's so many people in the same situation as me. They're all suffering. I know they are. Right. I have friends committing suicide in the barracks. Right. It's just like a very depressing place to be is at this hospital, this Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio at this time. Right. There are hundreds of people just like me that have very similar situations, if not worse. Right. I had friends that were missing all four limbs, both arms and both legs. Mm -hmm. Right. And like I knew I needed to do something, not just for myself, but for them. And that's what I did is I went all in on their problems. I took the focus off of my painful problems and started giving them my attention. Okay, how can I get this guy out of this dark funk, right? And I started pulling people, taking them to the gym, right? Started doing like obstacle races. Eventually, it came time for me to retire, December 2013. And m most people in the military, they're like, okay, what am I gonna do now, right? They struggle when they get out, yeah. especially that was the only thing that they knew. Well, I had... No shed of doubt what I want to continue doing in my life, right? My next calling was to continue serving my country, right? Beyond the call of duty, by pouring in my community, right? By helping people get out of their own damn way, right? Mm -hmm. And I just happened to choose the vessel or the vehicle of nutrition and fitness. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like, that's just been, like, my lifelong mission here on out is how can I help people become the person they're truly capable of becoming, and I know one of the biggest ways to do that is by the way they treat themselves, right? Yes. Through nutrition and fitness, Ultimately, that's kind of led me down the road like years later to starting my own nutrition coaching company with my little sister. So she's my business partner and eventually going on to starting another one that helps other coaches do what I have done. So that's kind of like the, the long story as short as I could possibly make it. <laughs> but yeah, that's really been like my driving factor. My driving force is that one single step that I took in my life, mm -hmm. right? Knowing like, hey, like people will look back at it thinking like, man, poor me, right? And that's what I first thought too. 
And at the end of the day, like, man, that was the best decision I ever made in my life was stepping on that bomb, right? I learned so much in that next year of my life that most people will never have the fortune enough ability to go through or experience. And I don't want them to experience that. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is I want to convey my experience to them so they can learn that lesson without having to face the pains that I have faced, yeah. right? Those struggles that I faced over that next two years, how can I condense them and give that to them? Like that's been what the transformation projects become, right? Is that one thing, but. This is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely want to tell you thank you for your services, man, yeah. and your dedication and everything, man. That was definitely a journey, mm -hmm. and uh, you've been through a lot, and you have the living witness that people can make it. No matter what you go through in life, what obstacles God puts you under, as long as you have determination and will, you can move forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. That truly means a lot, and I, I appreciate that. So Transformation Project pretty much really focused on the mindset, right? When you have a new customer, mm -hmm. how, w well, how, what, what are your steps in general? Yeah, so we must start with understanding ourselves first. Okay. Like, that's step one. Um, yeah, we focus. It's all-encompassing, right? So we start with the mind, and we start with the mind. It allows us to focus on the body. Right, with less stress. And that, at the end of the day, I think that, like, that's the goal for a lot of people, right? <laughs> is to, to live with less stress. Yes. You know? Um, so we really developed this process or our method. So it's called the total transformation method. And it was developed over personal experiences, okay. right? Like I went through this myself. I struggled for a long time, crash dieting, fad dieting, doing all the different things, only to figure out, like, I'm back at square one, right? I lost, what, 70 pounds throughout that first journey. What I didn't tell you is I had a, ended up gaining about 50 pounds of it back over the next like three years. It's so crazy how sometimes people lose weight, but they do the yo-yo effect. And yeah. They get bigger than where they were before. Yeah. Yeah. Cause your, your body remembers, right? It's very adaptive, you know? So like whenever you induce like the stimulus or the stress on it, which dieting, it is a stress, right? Mm -hmm. When you're eating less food than your body needs to survive, that yeah. is a huge stress on the body. It goes into like survival mode, you heard, right? So you hold everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it works against you at that point, right? It mm -hmm. just wants to keep you alive, right? That's the goal. Stay alive. That's it. It's not to have <laughs> six pack abs. It's not to look good on the beach. It's just, just it wants alive. you to li live, right? Yeah. So like that's the number one focus, right? But so what we do is we focus on the goals first, right? The okay. clarity, understanding the human being. And so like we have a four step process. The first thing is all about clarity and vision. So understanding who you are as an individual, like you must start with the human. It's not the diet, like it's not the calories. It's not the macros. It's not the exercise program. Like those things work, but will they work for you? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because the, not all diet work for everybody. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's where you have to start if you want to play this long game. And I, at the end of the day, my clients, they don't want to achieve a weight loss goal for a year. They want to achieve it for a lifetime. lifetime. So we need to start with the lifetime in mind, right? It's also a lifestyle change. Exactly, right? So we start with clarity. And when I say clarity, like, I'm not talking about, like, what are your goals? Like, most people are like, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, okay, cool. That's great, right? We're going to achieve that. But why do you want to lose 20 pounds? Mm -hmm. Why does that even matter? What is that going to do for your life? Okay, what is it going to do for everyone else around you's life? Right? How are you going to show up for yourself and how are you going to show up for the world? Mm -hmm. Right? The world will never experience what you have to offer if you never give it to it. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so if you don't have any confidence and you're not showing up, well, guess what? You're not showing up for anyone else. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, why does that matter to you first? Why is it important? Right? Because eventually you have to realize there will be sacrifices or what I like to call trade-offs that must be made. Right. If you want to change, there must be change. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they try and fight back against this, which it blows my mind. It's like people have like these habits or these things that do not serve them, but they'll like fight to keep them. And justify it. Yeah, they'll fight to keep it. them. And like, it's kind of like a, a hostage defending its captor. It mm -hmm. makes no sense. Like, mm -hmm. would you ever say, oh, this guy is holding me hostage? No, he's, he's really not that bad of a guy. Right. Yeah. He's OK. <laughs> and that's how people treat their bad habits, you know. Yeah. And so we start to really understand, like, OK, who is this person? What is their goals? What is the life that they want to live? what does their history teach us right because more than likely you've done things before in the past like most people they're not like oh this is the first time i'm ever trying to achieve this a goal they mm -hmm. they've worked at it before and so we start to understand okay what does your history look like what can we learn what are the clues that it's telling us and then of course okay where do we want to go and now we have this very clear picture of who you are what do you want to achieve what have you done in the past what are you willing to give up to achieve this what are your non-negotiables like what are the things that you're not willing to sacrifice because if you do you won't be living in alignment with who you want to become, mm -hmm. right? And then now we can actually fundamentally start to progress because we have a clear picture and we know exactly what to focus on and more importantly, what to not focus on, what the distractions are, 
right? So we start with clarity and vision is setting like this realistic expectation of where we're going, right? Because now we can implement the tactics because mm-hmm. we have the strategy now, you know? And so like that's like step one, mm-hmm. right? And if you've never done this before, like I really recommend like the best way to go about like setting a goal is what I like to do is I get to project forward a year from today. Okay. Right. So let's just say it's August, 2024. Right. What I want you to do is I want you to look back at your life. Right. You just had the best year of your life. I'm 34. So it it took me 34 years on this earth to have the best year of my life. This past year was the best year of my life. What did it look like? What did you accomplish? What are the experiences you had? What is the contribution you made? What is the relationships you made? What are the things that you achieved? Right. And look back at it rather than trying to project forward and look through it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, they're trying to look forward at this goal. And at the end of the day, you you don't have that thing. So it's kind of hard to understand it. And you're looking through like this cloud of dust. Mm -hmm. Like there's all these things in the way. So if you just pretend that you've already achieved it and you look back at your life, you're like, oh, man, like these are all the things that I did with my life. That's Mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. Right. And then eventually you start doing all those things, you know, and you get there. Right. Rather than trying to look forward at something, you have no idea what it is. Mm-hmm. Right. Because obviously you, you don't know what it is because you never achieved it before. Yeah. Right. And so Do you try to hold that approach with everybody. Like, or is it case by case? Like when you're studying a yeah. particular person, you're learning their habits. Because usually what it is with people, we're always try to set a goal and mm-hmm. say that we're going to do something, but we never can stick to it. Yeah. So how do you get over that hump as far as learning the person that you're dealing with and trying to get them to stick to the actual plan that they set. Yeah. I, I, I'm for all for setting goals. Like setting goals is a great first step. Right. But I'm way bigger on setting standards around goals. Yep. Right. Non-negotiables. Um, and I think a lot of people would benefit for this and doing it in a way that actually makes sense. A lot of people, they set these goals and like, they're very big, right. They're yeah. reaching for the ceiling of the house. Right, like I want to lose the 50 pounds. And I'm just going to say 50 pounds because it's a random number, right? Mm-hmm. Very big goal. And so now they feel like they have to do all the things perfectly well. And that's what demotivates people. You're like, exactly. oh, it's ha- so hard. I need to go to the gym six days a week. I need to eat my meal plan perfectly yeah. every single day of the week. I need to drink this amount of water. I need to do all of these things. If I don't do that, I'm not going to hit the 50 pounds, right? It's very stressful, right? And, and at the end of the day, like, how do you go from being someone that doesn't know how to achieve this and all of a sudden doing everything perfectly overnight. It mm-hmm. doesn't work. It doesn't work. So we like to start what we call the floor, right? Setting what we call anchor level habits. Mm-hmm. What are the one to two things that you can do every single day realistically? Does it matter what's going on in your life? Does it matter the circumstance, the situation? It doesn't matter. What is something you can do every single day consistently? To help move the needle. Exactly. To that, help move the needle. That remind me when I was training for the half marathon, I started at the last minute. One of my friends told me, you run the marathon, but you start practicing literally four weeks before. This is not somebody who really thinks through it. You're just a stubborn person yeah. running <laughs> because it's not normal. But what I was telling myself at first, say one mile at a time. Mm-hmm. And when I run the half marathon, every single time I was just like, when I reach one mile, I say, oh, I did one. Oh, I'm at two miles. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm at three. So let me focus to four. I was now looking to the, the 13 because of that. That thought was just like killing me, yeah. right? I was just just one at the time. Slowly but surely, take your time. Do whatever you could, but you have to finish this. Or it doesn't matter how you do it. You <laughs> need to finish it. That's what I keep yeah. telling myself when I was running. It was hard, though. Yeah. It's, like, it's like how do you eat an elephant, right? One mm-hmm. bite at a time. It's the same thing with like our habits, right? Think about it. Like Everything you've done into your, to your life in this point, up to this point has gotten you to where you're at, right? Yeah. Every single thing, every decision you made. So you've been developing habits every single day your entire life Mm -hmm. do you realistically think you can change them magically overnight when you worked on 40 years or 50 years or 30 or whatever it may be to get to where you're at right now no No. you know so you have to start off small like and that's so important right but eventually you get that underneath your tool belt right you start getting a little better you start getting a little bit more advanced because you haven't given up because it was doable so you've been doing it every day kind of like i said you build momentum right i lost my first five pounds that five pounds led to 50 pounds Right. But it's because it gave me momentum. And as soon as I had momentum, I gave myself evidence or proof that I could do this. So you need to celebrate your win, even if it's tiny, mm-hmm. but every little time you need to celebrate Everything because matters. you need positive reinforcement to you, to yeah. yourself mm-hmm. in order to keep going. Right. Every, yeah. Absolutely. Positive reinforcement. Right. The same way we discipline people. 
right? Like what that people discipline someone say that you probably shouldn't be doing that thing. Same thing when you do something great with your life. You need to celebrate it. You need to have some kind of reinforcement that that was the right thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, but like setting like those floor level anchors eventually, like those become effortless. Those become easy. And when they are, well, now you become more advanced, mm-hmm. right? So now you up the difficulty on it. Okay, cool. I was going out for walks three days a week for 30 minutes. Let's do five days the next few weeks. Right. Oh, I got that down. Maybe we up the time duration. We're going to start doing 40 minutes instead of 30. Right. And eventually you start to compound on how good you're getting. And like all of a sudden you're doing the thing Mm -hmm. right all out. And now guess what? You move the goalposts. Right. Because we're going to achieve a goal. The goal is like guaranteed if you play the game long enough, like you will get good. Right. And eventually I think everyone probably realized this. Like you set this goal. like, Oh, yeah, I want to. I don't know. I want to make a, a million dollars a year. And eventually you make a million dollars a year and you're like, oh, I want to make $10 million. You know what I mean? Right. You just move the goal, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> you just right. move the goal forward. And so you're, you're always striving for something else. Yeah. So rather than like set like this, this high standard, like, okay, this is the, the pinnacle. I do this. I'm done. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, like this is a lifelong pursuit. You're not eating healthy for a day or for a week. You're eating healthy for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause that's the goal. It's like lifelong success, right? Yeah. Lifelong, lifelong health. You know, so it's just setting like those standards, right? It's like, what are the things that I will do every single day consistently, no matter what? And if I do not do that, well, now I need to question what is the thing that I want, Mm -hmm. right? Because I'm not living in alignment with that anymore. Those aren't, it's not living in alignment with my values, you know? In a nutrition um, uh, aspect of it, what's some of the misconception people have about food, product, what they should eat, (laughs) not eat? This is for all the ladies out there. Because <laughs> you just can't go out and exercise. You yeah, because yeah. uh, <laughs> some people exercise all day long, but that little yeah. love angle, yeah. how we call that yeah, in English, yeah, love yeah. angle? Uh, love yeah. handle, love yeah. handle. In yeah. French, yeah. we say poignet d'amour, it's not <laughs> moving, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, so for sure. What what some of the things, because for health, is is a part of physical work, but also is the food that you put in. So what yeah. some of the misconceptions people have in general yeah with um, food and some and that's a it's a great thing that you bring up right is you cannot work a bad diet right you okay. can out you cannot outwork a bad diet it doesn't matter who you are so pretty much all diet work but it depends on the person <laughs> exactly right like the the food that you put into your body is going to be like the thing that determines like what happens to your body at the end of the day okay right and so like the biggest misconception that i truly believe is there's this whole concept that there's right and wrong or bad and good. Okay. Right. And eventually what that does is it either one scares you into believing like this thing is bad for me and it does not work and I should never have this. Or it does B, which is it backs you into this corner of what I like to call dietary boxes, right? You put yourself in this dietary box saying, I only do keto because keto is the only healthy way. And they don't realize like at the end of the day, like everyone is different. Like everyone has different wants, different needs, different goals, different lifestyles. Everyone is different. It's what works best for you and your goal. Like that's going to be the thing that determines what you should do. Because at the end of the day, if you don't stick to it, guess what's not going to work? The diet, right? So if you cannot realistically stick to it every single day for the rest of your life, guess what you'll never have? Lifelong results, right? And so like I always like to look through the lens of if I cannot do it for a day, right, it doesn't matter. Or if I can't do it for a lifetime, don't do it for a day. Right. Cause it's only a distraction because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like you want to find something that's going to work long term if you want to be able to actually sustain the results. But a lot of people, they, they label these things as good or bad, right or wrong. And they never take the time to truly understand who they are and what works best for their body. Right. Okay. So it's a lot of like, I hate to say this. It's a lot of error and trial, right? You got to test and see what works, see what doesn't work. You know, like I think for some a great example of this, like, me, for example, I can eat gluten, right? No problem. Nothing happens to me. Mm-hmm. So is it fair for me to say like gluten diets are stupid? No, no. not really. Because it works well for me. I can eat it. But someone that may have an allergy for gluten is probably <laughs> preaching gluten free is the only way to go. Yeah. Right. Because it doesn't work for them, you know? And so now they tell their friend like, oh, you got to go gluten free because this works. Well, no, it works for you because you have a gluten allergy, okay. <laughs> right? I don't have a gluten allergy. I can eat gluten. I'm fine. Exactly. You know? So like, like me, I can eat sugar. I'm not gonna if I eat sugar today. I, I climb on the on the scale. No changes on my weight. Yeah. But some people they eat a can um, a cupcake, mm-hmm. and it's like the mm-hmm. next day they're like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> one and a half pound, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Like I was, I saw something uh, one time. I was watching on social media. Somebody was tell was saying that um, 
if you eat a pack of uh, M&Ms. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll finish the M&Ms by myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were saying if you eat that, it's going to take you two hours on a, on a treadmill to, uh. to eliminate that. But it's not necessarily true for me because I can eat one pack yeah. and I don't feel no yeah. bad. But of course, it's not good to eat it for the sure. entire day for seven days a week. Yeah. But when I eat a pack, I don't feel bad about it because I know my body can just take it. There you go. You know. And I, I think that's ultimately what a lot of people are ultimately searching for, right? Is being able to enjoy life, right? And not feel constrained by certain things, certain foods, especially food, right? Food has no emotions. It does not care about you. Yeah. But for some reason, you care a lot about it. Exactly. Right? It, it drives a lot of your emotions. It's, it's so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so good. It helps you when you feel bad. You. You help you when you when you're happy, you eat. When you're sad, you eat. When there's some going on, yeah. you eat. We always meet people and have a meal. So yeah, it's part yeah, of yeah. That's why like there's this big tug of war playing on. Like, what is it? Is it bad or is it good? Right? Because we eat when we're happy. We eat when we're sad. People will label sadness is bad and happy is good. Reality. Those are just emotions that happen. They don't have to be bad or good. They can just be what they are. Same thing with food. You know. So like you think about like. Since the moment like you're born, you're born pathological. You're, you're born on the way out of this earth. So everything you do from now until you exit is simply to delay that time frame, mm-hmm. right? So the way you treat your body, well, you're helping yourself either delay or speed that process up. Okay. Right? And so we start to think about like the emotional side of things. Like, guess what? Whenever kids are crying, what do most parents do? Feed them. Give That's them. the first advice people give you when you Feed have a brand them, new baby. Right? Your baby cry all the time, you cry all night. <laughs> Just to put a bottle in their mouth and add some syrup, but you're like, yeah. syrup is not good for feed a brand them. newborn. You yeah. have to not, it's not good for that. But yeah. no, everybody will tell you, just feed the baby, which is wrong. Exactly. Just feed the baby. Right. And then all of a sudden they do something good or in sports or at school. And guess what you're doing again? You're feed the baby with sugar. <laughs> you're feeding the baby with sugar now. Right. <laughs> and so like this whole like behavior reward thing, it's kind of like been thrown off since the way, since the time we were born. And no wonder it's like people struggle with it in their later adult years is because this whole time they've been conditioned to view food as pleasure and as pain, as reward and as discipline. And it's true because I'm thinking about it. Like when you're, when you're happy and stuff, let's say you sat, for example, you, mm-hmm. you go and eat a, a bucket of ice cream, but, uh, or if you, and I never heard nobody say, Hey, you know what? You sat, let, let's burn the energy. <laughs> yeah. Let's, you know, get yeah. a punching yeah. bowl and, and hit the yeah. punchy bowl until you feel better. Nobody tell you that, right? Yeah. And you don't see anybody eating a plate of broccoli when they're sad. No. <laughs> they go into the cookies the cake the ice cream the alcohol mm-hmm. you know and like there's a lot more to it hormonally and metabolically speaking too mm-hmm. right when you talk about like hormones cortisol well certain foods do elevate cortisol do elevate like serotonin so you're happy feel good hormone carbohydrates well they help increase that okay so there's a reason why a lot of people turn to like sugary foods when they're feeling stressed out or emotionally they're, they're just drained and they need like this just oomph of happiness, well, they turn to the foods that are going to supply that to their hormones. Like your body's very smart. Yeah. Right? Very smart. It will find a way to get the things that it wants and that it needs to survive. So pretty much yeah. when you're when you're out there sitting down with yourself and you're going to whatever emotion is going on, stress, yeah. fatigue, anger, whatever, just don't turn into food, period. I, that, that's some some I'm feeling. Um, just slow down a little bit. Yeah. Try to think what's going on with yourself. There you go. And see um, what could you do to alleviate or to change that feeling, the emotion you're going through. Correct. Don't necessarily turn it into that's food. Like, exactly. That's the key, exactly what you just said. It's it's not to have more willpower, more discipline, and say, no, don't do it. It's to create awareness around what's happening, mm-hmm. the thoughts that are happening, right, and the way that you're viewing food in that moment in time. And like that's the key. Like It's creating awareness. Most people, they live their life just like mindlessly, right? through these emotions, through all of these things. And if we could just take the time to learn from the things that we're going through, the experiences, and have awareness of our decisions, our choices, well, now we can put ourselves in the best position to get through it, Mm -hmm. you know? So, like, you find yourself, like, in that that rush hour traffic in Houston, and you're just stressed out. Your boss is calling you. He's pissed off. You're you're, late to pick up your baby from daycare. Yeah, exactly. "Ah!" Your kids are driving you crazy. And now all of a sudden you find yourself in the fast food drive-thru. Like, screw it. I don't care. I just need something quick, you know? But realistically, is that going to help all those stressors disappear? Not at all. It's not going to solve any of those problems. It's a temporary fix. It's not even a fix. It's only going to hold you back from achieving your health goals now. Mm -hmm. So you're just adding more stress on the stress that you already have. Right? And people aren't aware of that. But if you could just, in that moment, be like, hey, this choice I'm about to make, is it serving me or is it keeping me from becoming the person I want to become? Simple yes or no. Is it serving my life and my goals or is it holding me back? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. But like that becomes 
the question now, right? So now you simply are at this crossroad where you get to make a choice and it doesn't matter what choice you make at this point because now you're the decider, right? You're not just mindlessly going through life, right? And then now it can be like, hey, yeah, let's have the food because, hey, I'm short on time and I just need something in me now. I haven't eaten all day and I'll get back to it the next day. Completely okay, right? Or you can say, hey, guess what, man? This is all just emotional. It's just my brain playing tricks on me. I want to achieve my goals faster. Let's just say no to it, Mm -hmm. you know? So now you get to actually choose. And then of course, kind of like you said earlier, the reward and the discipline thing. So if you do choose the right thing, you should reward yourself for doing that. Mm -hmm. Don't reward yourself for food. Like, Hey, you know what? I'm proud of myself today. Maybe you're going to go get a massage, go get your nails and buy a new pair of shoes, Mm -hmm. right? Do something to reward that, that behavior that you want more of. Right. And then, On the opposite side, if you do decide to have the food that's not going to serve your life, it's not saying you need to discipline yourself by like punishing yourself, but maybe you need to reevaluate and revisit your goals. Okay. Right? Like your why for doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it because you want to be a better mother? Because Mm -hmm. you want to be more productive in the workplace? Right? And if those are the things that matter and that's the reason why you're doing this and now you're not in alignment with that, well, we need to question those a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe your why isn't deep enough, right? There's not something driving you that's meaningful enough yeah you know christian mm-hmm. what could you do to build more muscle <laughs> yeah that's that's for me yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm all skinny <laughs> and bone <laughs> i'm trying to build the muscles <laughs> and the, the simplest way to kind of keep this right is to build muscle there's really two things that need to happen right okay. is we need to break down muscle tissue right okay. so we need to give our body a reason to actually grow more muscle that's okay. first right so we need to call some kind of stimulus Typically for most, the best way to go about this, depending on like your training history, so context matters. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody completely new, like you can just ramp this down. But for most, you're going to want to go to the gym and you want to do some kind of resistance style training. Okay. So lift some kind of heavy weights, right? And heavy is going to be relative, right? It's going to be depending on where they're at and their goals, right? And where they're actually capable of. So like, that's the first thing is you need to actually tax the muscles. You need to give them a reason to grow, right? The next thing is after we break them down, well, we have to recover. Okay. We have to repair the tissue. Okay. Right. And there's two things that we can really do for that. All right. One is we need to make sure that we're resting enough. Right. So getting adequate amount of sleep and we're reducing stress in our life. And the second thing is we need to make sure that we're eating enough protein or enough food to actually grow more tissue. Okay. So for most people, a good starting place when it comes to like the protein amount would be like 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's a general recommendation. Of course, everyone's different, right? Context doesn't matter, but that's just like a general good starting place. If you're eating 0.68, 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight and protein, like you're probably in a good place, right? Are you creating a stimulus to actually grow more muscle? So are you working out hard enough? That means, well, then you're probably going to start to put on muscle over a period of time, assuming that you're recovering. And where are the good source of protein type of food? Yeah. So we're going back to like good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I think all protein is going to be protein, right? Protein sources. Um, I always recommend is going to be like animal sources of protein because they're complete proteins, Mm -hmm. right? That's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. And then for the people that may be like non-meat eaters, whatever, um, there's going to be plant-based proteins. There's there's great uh, shakes and powders that are complete sources that you can acquire. Um, Then of course, like it's going to acquire a little more attention to detail being like animal-based or Mm plant-based because, well, our plants, they don't actually have that much protein in them. So now we're going to be having to get in a lot of protein, but also with that protein comes a lot of like carbs, right? From the plants, right? Or maybe even fats from like the fattier sources like peanut butter or almond butter or something like that. There's a lot of other stuff you that keep comes naming along. stuff that I love. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. And so like plant-based proteins are typically very calorically dense for the amount of protein in them. Okay. Right. So you have like a four ounces of chicken breast, 25 grams of protein, right? Maybe like two grams of fat and zero carbs. Mm-hmm. So you're only getting mainly protein, but now you go over the plant base. Well, now it's mainly carbs with some fats and now a little bit of protein. So you completely switch the macro profile. So that's why it becomes a real struggle to get enough protein. You're also going to be overeating carbs and fats now. So your calories go higher. So what advice for people like me that don't eat red meat? That don't eat red meat? Yeah. It's completely okay. Chicken, fish, find whatever works for you. Like that's going to be the, the number one thing. And if you are someone that wants to stay like completely animalist, well then we're going to have to pay a little more attention to detail with what we are consuming. Okay. Right. And that's really what it's going to come back down to is, Hey, like this is the goal. And like, this is the thing that you have to do to achieve that goal. Mm-hmm. Right. Are you willing to do it? If not, well then don't say that that's the goal. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's understanding, again, non-negotiables and trade-offs. What are the things you're willing to sacrifice in this process? Okay. But yeah, like it's, it's whatever works best for you. Like, at the end of the day, like for me, for example, I eat the same thing every single day. I have been what for years. I'll, I'll explain my whole day's worth of eating to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I only eat two things. Greek yogurt is number one. So like the big tub of Greek yogurt, uh -huh. I eat an entire tub of yogurt every single day. It's a lot of protein. Okay. Right? A lot of protein. It's 100 grams of protein in the whole tub. Oh, wow. Right? So that's why I pick it. It's easy. Right? You don't have to cook it. Simple. Okay. Berries, frozen berries. So like the big bag of frozen berries at like HEB, I'll mm -hmm. buy like the big like five pound bag and I'll eat like an entire bowl worth. So probably like 600 grams a day of just frozen berries. I put them in the microwave for about a minute and it mm -hmm. makes them like really soft and sweet and delicious. So I recommend it if you haven't done that before. Mm -hmm. And then that's like meal one and meal two. So, <laughs> so like I eat the same thing twice there. And then my next meal is just ground beef and more fruit, right? So I'll eat a pound of ground beef. That's, mm -hmm. that's literally it. Oh, well, mm. yeah. So what do you think about raw food? Some people, they, they keep telling you, oh, only eat raw food and then you will be, you live longer or whatever. What, what do you think about that? We're talking about like oh, natural food or like raw cooked food. Well, raw vegetables. Like, okay. You, yeah. You yeah, just yeah. don't cook yeah. it. It's just. No, absolutely. I think for most, they do, they do have a place in most people's diet, right? Mm -hmm. Like eating whole healthy nutrient dense food more often than not is definitely going to be way more beneficial than eating the box of cheeses and the, the, the bag <laughs> of Skittles. You know what I mean? So like majority of your diet should be whole nutrient dense food. So we're talking about real whole foods. So avoid processed food and period in general. Do your best, right? Yeah. Like do your best, right? A good rule of thumb, right? Is like the whole like 80, 20 concept. I don't yeah. really like that. Right. I don't really like drawing like these hard lines in the sand, mm -hmm. but like, for example, if you have four meals a day, let's do our best to make three of those meals like pretty whole, high quality foods. And then that one meal can be a little fun meal, right? Something mm -hmm. that you could splurge on or have that one off item, you know, and like that's an easy way to kind of get started with creating balance. And then, of course, you can kind of dial that in as you need. Right. So it's really up to you in context. Wow. Well, to what you were saying, too, I have a question. Um, you have people that work out every day, right? Mm hmm talking about tearing down muscle right you tear down muscle to build it back right what do you advise as far as like resting periods yeah like your body a resting time that's a very good question um so i have this rule of thumb every dose of stress requires an equal dose of recovery right so if i spend an hour in the gym stressing my body out breaking it down i need to spend at least an hour with intentional recovery and that could be an hour of being intentional with the foods that you eat, right? Mm -hmm. So eat three meals a day. Let's just say it's 20 minutes per meal. Well, making sure that those three meals are the best meals ever, mm -hmm. right? Or it's spend an extra hour sleeping. Um, a lot of people, they'll go to the gym day in and day out, and they're not actually recovering properly. So what we can see is a bunch of like these red flags. You'll feel almost like flu-like symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. You ever like go to the gym, you work out hard, and you feel like you almost got sick the next day? Or mm -hmm. perhaps you did like a long-distance run, Right. And at the end of this run, you maybe feel like tired and lethargic and like you have the flu. Like that would be like a, a sign of just an abundance of stress. Mm -hmm. Right. Your immune system, whenever it's under a lot of stress, it mm -hmm. starts to downregulate. Okay. So like you won't heal and recover as fast. And it's a survival mechanism, right? Just yeah. think about it. Years ago, we we're running from lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> well, your body, it didn't care about how strong you were in the gym. It wanted mm -hmm. to survive. It wanted to take all the energy it had and focus on getting away. Yeah. Right? Stay alive. Yeah. Not the immune system, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very in energy demanding thing. So just making sure that you're doing your best to reduce the amount of stress. So if you're feeling like you're not recovering, mm -hmm. like you're going to the gym and you're extremely sore the next day, mm -hmm. right? And you're doing that day in and day out. Well, you're not recovering properly. That's like what that's telling me, right? You're feeling sick or flu-like. Well, you're not recovering properly. If you're waking up like lethargic, you feel like you have no energy throughout the day. You're probably there's abundance of stress. We should probably sleep. So just small things like that it can just okay. be like simple red flags. Like listen to your body, understand what it's saying. And then respond accordingly. Yeah. Let me ask you a few yeah. questions. So I'm going to give you a different profile. Mm -hmm. And then you tell me what will be the best way for that person to go. Okay. The first <laughs> client avatar, uh, that person is a male. Mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, never worked out. He may have some, a uh, uh, little bit some blood pressure, some, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit of overweight, not too much, but a little. And he would like to start. Mm -hmm. What will be his first step? Just a cute few seconds, and then we're going to move to the next um, client avatar. Yeah, well, the first thing that I would want to do is identify what he's been doing. What, what his life looks like beforehand. So you work from home. 
I often tell him in front of a computer uh, and never work out. <laughs> cool. Um, and then he's not, for food, try not to eat a lot of bad stuff, but just a regular, you know, okay. sometimes to time fast food, sometimes no fast food, but in general, just not moving much. Gotcha. So he hasn't really been following any specific nutrition plan, just no. kind of just... Just being, a regular, mind, being mindful. Just a regular guy who just works cool. in the office and then um, he would like to start but not sure how to start. Yeah, so th- what I would do first if they were to kind of walk into me is I would want to get a, a very thorough understanding of where his baseline looks like. Okay. okay. So for five to seven days, basically what I want to identify is exactly what his current lifestyle looks like. So I would just start tracking and monitoring everything he's currently consuming, mm-hmm. right? So that can be like a food log. So just writing everything down, taking pictures or logging into an app, Okay. right? For the next seven days, I want you to record every single thing you put in your mouth. Okay. Don't try and change anything. Just keep doing what you've been doing. I just want to see what you're doing. Okay. Right. And along with monitoring that information, I want to understand biofeedback. So that's just a fancy way of saying like your lifestyle qualities. Got it. So how much are you sleeping and what is the quality of that sleep? Right. What does your stress levels look like? Um, Things like how much water drinking, just starting to kind of paint the picture of what their quality of life looks like in terms of just like food, nutrition, daily movement. That would be the first thing is an assessment, right? Because if I were to give any advice off of that, I would be guessing. Mm -hmm. Now we have real data that we can work from, right? So we have this baseline that we can approve upon. Okay. And so what I would do is I would establish this baseline. Okay, cool. This is how much food he's eating on hours. This is how Mm -hmm. much hours he's sleeping. Which one can I pull on first to give him the most leverage, to give him the most evidence and the most momentum so he can have confidence knowing like, hey, I am in the right place and I can do this. Okay. Right? So that were, that's where the kind of like the experience and the coaching comes in. It's like, okay, what lever do I need to pull on for this individual in their current season of life? It may not even be the nutrition side yet. Okay. Right? Depending on what his lifestyle looks like. Busy professional, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or has a bunch of kids. It's maybe overwhelming and stressful. Yeah, it maybe is. Maybe we should focus on the, on the sleep a little bit first or the recovery from the gym, right? Or drinking a little bit more water. Like, let's figure out what it is that we can pull on first to give us that big leverage opportunity Mm -hmm. that's going to give us the most output. Okay. All right. So that would be the first thing that I would want to (laughs) do, right? For an individual that may not be in a position to work with a coach or know someone to work with, Mm -hmm. what I would honestly recommend is keeping it very simple, right? Like we talked about before, eat whole nutrient-dense foods, Okay. So prioritize eating real food more often than not, Okay. right? Getting out in the sunshine, right? Okay. Go for a 20 to 30 minute walk every, every day. Every day. Every day. Monday to Sunday. Yeah. 20. No break on Sundays. No, no. No break on Saturday. No, no break. Aww. See, no sleep, right? Now. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. But like, so the reason I like walking so much, right? It is the only form of movement or exercise that is scientifically proven, right? To reduce stress, right? Like to physically reduce stress. Oh, really? Yeah. Whenever you go How do you gym, explain that French people walk every day, but they're stressed out? <laughs> it helps reduce <laughs> it, right? But going to the gym and working out, well, you're causing stress, mm-hmm. right? So this is actually a stress reducing, first of all. Okay. Your body is designed to walk. It's designed to move, right, physically. What I really love about it is you can multitask. So you put on an audio book, and now you get some self-development, right, or some education, some skills inside your ear. You can plan out your meals on your phone while you're walking, mm-hmm. and you're also walking, getting in movement and reducing. Like you're, There's so many different things going on right now at once. So just right? 30 minutes just of tw- walk tw- every single 20 day. 20 to 30 minutes. Start where you can. It could be 10 minutes. It could be 20 minutes. It doesn't matter. Just start with what we like to call the floor-level anchor, right? Start mm-hmm. with what you can realistically do. You know, and like that would be the thing. And then, of course, drink water, right? Half your body How weight much? ounces. Half your body weight in ounces would be a good starting point. How much? Half your body weight in ounces. Mm. I don't know your body weight, so I can't say the ounces. Oh, <laughs> I'm 152 pounds. Right. So probably around 75 ounces. Great starting place. Okay. Right. And of course, depending on where you're at, like if you're in Houston, it's very hot, right? It's very humid. You're okay, sweating we a more, lot. We need more right? water. We're, we're going to need to increase the water intake. And you probably want to pay attention to the amount of sodium that you're getting too, right? For electrolytes. Okay. So which type of water? There's so much choice on water when you look at what's available for sale now. I which just, type of water? <laughs> that's like stepping over or dollars for pennies. You know what I mean? Okay. Like it's just whatever you have access to. Okay. You know, safe water. Yeah. I could even say, yeah, like it's like, no, you need to go have like the Dasani smart water, whatever it may be. <laughs> or no, just start with your sink. Just <laughs> start with you know, the just, sink, just, start with the one in exactly. the Exactly. Just start with what you have access to and where you're at. You know what I mean? Of course, if you can up the quality of water, definitely do. If you have means to, but hey, like don't feel like that's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And like if you were to just do those basic things, like you would be. You see a, the change. You would, yeah, you would absolutely see the change. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. It's not sexy. 
right? It's very boring. <laughs> you know, it's not keto. It's not 75 hard. It's not, it's not, it's not some fad programs that has a sexy title or the sexy headline or hook, right? It's just being a human. Yeah. yeah. And so people get very bored or burnt out on that because they feel like there's more that they should be doing, right? There's something else that's easier. There's quicker in reality. No, like that is the foundation. So pretty much the more of the story, don't just stick to a diet. Just, just, just look at your lifestyle. It's lifestyle. Because I feel like after some people say diet is like for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop doing this for that long and I'm going to have that result. Where in reality, it's a lifestyle change yeah. that you really need to do. And you start with your head. Yeah. So, right? Yeah. That's where you need start to start. With, start with what's important to you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you don't need to use my lifestyle approach because my lifestyle approach is not going to fit your lifestyle. Exactly. Right? So like people that like they go turn to their friends for like, diet advice like what diet are you doing i'm gonna do that because it's working for you well it may not work for you yeah and that's okay because we don't necessarily have the same metabolism <laughs> yeah same metabolism same goal state and everything and we also know? don't do not have a like you say the body have a memory so we necessarily exactly. didn't, didn't grow up the same way exactly so what i used to eat growing up acted a different way in my body compared sure. to you what you so yours. yeah 100 percent. so at the end of the day call nick and he's gonna <laughs> sit down with you and go over everything don't ask uncle joe Call Nick. <laughs> How this people? Great, yeah, I appreciate that. How people can have access to you and what's your Instagram information so they can at least start following you? Yeah, the Transformation Project. Okay, just uh, yeah. Transformation yep. Project at the Transformation Project. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, if they would like to reach out to you, have an appointment. Same yeah. thing. You just go on online and then contact yeah. you directly. Yeah. You can schedule a complimentary coaching call. We'll jump on a call. Um, like I said, we'll pull back all the layers, you uh -huh. know what I mean? Really get to know who you are. And then, of course, I like to always provide a lot of value to everyone. You know, I want to make sure that you have some kind of process in place so you can go out and do it on your own, if, if anything. You know, at the end of the day, like, my goal in life is to help as many people as I possibly can, right? And if that means, hey, like, giving it all away, that's what I want to do, you mm -hmm. know? So, like, transformationproject.com. They can schedule a call or they can jump into our Facebook group. We have a, a, a Facebook group where we're in there every single day doing live training. So they get direct access to coaches completely for free. We push a bunch of resources in there. So uh -huh. recipe guides, eating out guides, fitness guides, all the things, right? We'll give you all the tools that you need to be successful and we'll actually be there to support you every step throughout the process. This is great. Thank yeah. you so much. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have all of his information uh right here underneath um this uh the, on, on our post thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time Bye -bye.